Hey, welcome back to Fish Out Northwest. Wayne England and Thomas Donlin in the bait lab together. <laughs> Reunited once again. I love it. This is <laughs> this awesome. Is funny. We got enough room in here for all this. I know. Man. Okay. Well, like they got a 53-inch chest, oh, so it's goodness. a little crowded up in here. For God's sakes. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, something that we uh, really look forward to, Tommy, is hitting the salt water. And not just for yeah. salmon and things that we're doing as of late, but, man, we got uh, some great opportunity coming up. You know, Puget Sound, Bottom Fish opens May 1st. And yeah. last year we put that video together with live bait for Lingcott and had mm -hmm. an absolute blast with our buddy mm -hmm. Matt. And we've been talking about all the stuff we get to look forward to this year because Tommy's boat is back in commission. That's right. We got some serious ocean fisheries to go after. Well, and you know what the thing is, is with this, we're going to cover inshore bottom fishing tonight. Yeah. And, and this is a game for anybody to play. Right. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now that anybody... Anybody that watches this mm -hmm. can go out and catch a link on sea bass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we will personally help you if you cannot. But I'm telling you, this is this is like one of the easiest fisheries we have. It's amazing how easy it is. And before we get strolling down the, that easy road, I want to remind everybody that Bay Lab segments are presented each and every week by Max Lure. Check out everything Max Lure has going it. MaxDuralab.com. Also, they are down at the Sportsman Show this week in Portland. In Portland, yeah. So stop at their booth and say hi. Tell them we sent you. Anyway, uh, you know, we're going to start with some basics, Tommy. One of the funnest things to do uh, when you get out there, like uh, where we were just fishing blackmouth the other day, mm -hmm. if we would have ran just out a little further and hit those kelp beds on the way out past the caves going, going west, uh, you can pull up there, tie, uh, tie up in tight. 30 to 50 feet of water, mm -hmm. get in those kelp beds and start tossing these soft plastic, lead headed jigs, soft plastic, one or two ounce jig head and a soft plastic. And you have all these different patterns and colors, you know, motor oil is a good one. This red in these uh, chartreuses, purple with this blue glitter in there, just for whatever reason in this double tail, Amazon. whatever it is about them, uh, sea bass and those other creatures that live amongst those kelp beds. And sometimes you mm -hmm. get them small uh, link on there too. We've caught yeah. Yeah, smaller sure. ling cod yeah. in that shallow water. A lot of people think you don't find those ling cod in there. But you know what, guys? It's as simple as this is an eight and a half foot, eight to 20 pound spinning rod. Perfect size, perfect yep. uh, strength. Because once in a while you get one of them uh, portly, you know, six, seven pound sea bass. They put up a pretty good mm -hmm. fight. And you're fighting them against that current and whatnot. So I use nothing more than there's a 3000 series uh, pen reel, which is ideal for your salt conditions because it's all sealed, designed for that type of fishing. Got some braided line on there, 25 pound top shot. And then I also put, uh, Tommy, about uh, 14 inches or so above my lure. I do put a barrel swivel or a short chain swivel because if this thing is spinning in current and whatnot when you're retrieving it in after you've uh, jigged it back towards you mm -hmm. and it spins, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spin your line up tremendously. So you got to have something in there that spins. And I rely on that barrel swivel just above your presentation because I tie that directly to... Uh, the eyelet on that jig head. And the nice thing is once you tie that jig on, you can change out any color uh, pattern and quick change outs. You're going to find out what they're hitting on that day based on sunlight, mm -hmm. based on time of day, based on cloud cover, what have you. But now, are, thing, you, are you sorry, are you going with a lighter leader here or a heavier leader than what your main line is? Uh, typically, I'd run a uh, lighter one. I actually just cut this and tied this on for demonstration purposes. But you can drop that by, say, five pounds on your test. I could put okay. a 30 pound top shot, run a 20 pound here. If it gets gnarled up by the teeth on them bass after a couple of them, just change it out. Mm -hmm. You know, don't take chances, but you just run your fingers down that after you catch each one. And if it's not frayed or in any way, uh, you know, change, just go ahead and keep fishing it. Um, nice thing is if you do get hung up on something, you got a breaking point built into your You do, system, and that, right? that's kind of why I mentioned it. Yeah. So we yeah. were joking earlier, right? Because we were talking about like, which how-to should we do tonight? Right, right. And you're like, oh yeah, throw plastics in, in the kelp, you know? And I'm like, Oh yeah, what are you going to use? Are you going to use the lizard or the frog, right? <laughs> right. And I'm so frogging it. Yeah. Maybe maybe talk a little bit about, you know, we're right outside the kelp and how heavy of a lead head is that? That's a 1 ounce. Uh no, that's not a 1 ounce. That's a I don't know what that is. 2 ounce. That's a 2 ounce. Uh, it doesn't take much more than that. Right. Because yeah. you're fishing shallow, right? You're, you're 30 to shallow. 50. That's a two ounce. And you know what? You literally are casting to the edge of the kelp and you let it sink. It's kind of like what we're doing with those triploids over at uh, Rufus. Yeah, right. I'm letting exactly. it sink and then I'm reeling and I'm giving a little twitch. I'm just getting that soft plastic to flutter. And it's a, it's a elevation change and it goes up and down. Mm -hmm. Typically, right as it drops and pendulum starts penduling away from that kelp bed, they come out from under the kelp. They're hanging around that kelp because they're feeding. 
Yeah. The kelp is inundated with small fish seeking cover, and those sea bass and whatnot come up out of the uh, from the bottom. That's why they're not in very deep water, and they ambush those small fish. So this mimics just a small bait fish swimming away from the kelp. It's out there by itself, and they come out and they they pop it. Now, one thing you got to be aware of is if you uh, are in an area where you do see a few pinnipeds swimming around mm -hmm. and you get a sea bass on, you better get to work and get that sucker in quick because they will come yeah, steal your fish. They do. Um, so yeah, multiple colors, load your box with soft plastic, jig heads, and, uh, not a bad way to go and a good way to have a lot of fun. The kids uh, absolutely love this because it's really uh, yeah. very involved, casting and retrieving, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, let's cover the other part of this board now. So, so what I brought to the table tonight, you know, usually people think of pipe jigs. Right, well, and if you're not familiar with our Northwest fisheries, and I show you something like this, you're probably thinking, what in the heck? This guy went to a hardware store and he's using this to catch fish. Mm -hmm. But believe it or not, this is a copper pipe. It's filled mm -hmm. with lead. Mm -hmm. You got two metals that are at the exact opposite ends of the noble scale. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you are creating this microelectric current that just drives link cod specifically nuts, right? So this is our tool for link cod. Now bass will also hit this, mm -hmm. okay? You know, the other thing is, is if you're familiar with the pipe jig, usually you think, oh yeah, we're gonna go fishing in 400 feet of water, we're using a two pound pipe jig, but you don't see a lot of people go inshore and say, hey, you know what? Does that tactic work inshore? Sure. And it absolutely does. And when, when I say inshore, I'm talking about like 120 feet of water mm -hmm. or less. Um, now, I wanna show you a couple things. We're gonna go to the board and I'm gonna talk you through how to build one of these from scratch uh, so that you can do this. Okay, so as we look down here, I'm gonna move these plastics aside for just one second. Please do. And you got a couple different sizes here, but I just wanna talk through the mechanics of this first. Um, you're gonna notice with these pipe jigs that, and this goes for any pipe jig, the hook never goes below the pipe jig and it never comes above the pipe. It's really important important because you don't want to get the hook hung up on the bottom and you don't want to snag it in the rocks and you don't want it to come around and wrap the top of your line. Mm. Now as far as, so, so really what that says is that your hook size is dependent on the length of your pipe jig. And that's why you're gonna notice that on this pipe jig next door, I've got something that's a little bit less than a half inch, maybe about three eighths diameter, but I've got a bigger hook. And that's simply because I can get away with it. I'm gonna run the biggest hook that I can on the bottom without going below or above the pipe. Oh, and it's as sense. simple as that. Yep. And you can you can get as fancy as you want or not, but you're looking at three different diameters here and um, you're looking at different weights too. So, you know, if you go into 120 feet of water, maybe you're gonna use this guy over here, which is more in the eight ounce range. And if, it's, if you're in shallow on a hard pan bottom or a rocky area, maybe you're gonna step over here and you're gonna use something that's in the four ounce range okay mm -hmm. now the other thing that's extremely important is the hardware so we're gonna look at the hardware here for a second the the action end of the equation okay so you've got your treble hook and by the way just so you know this is a two aught this is a four aught and this over here is a six aught and you're gonna size appropriately but that gives you a rough idea of the sizes of these hooks now the important thing is is you're gonna have a barrel swivel that attaches to the cotter pin that is in the pipe. So as you look really closely right here, that's the tip of a cotter pin sticking out. Attached to that is your barrel swivel. Attached to that is a heavy duty split ring and then the split ring attaches to your treble hook. Now, mm -hmm. the split ring here, the split ring has to be a large enough diameter in order to get through the eye of the treble hook without plastically deforming that split ring. Okay, now that's the key. Now, once you have that in the equation, um, you have something that spins. So if a link cod hits this, and you know, you don't know, you honestly don't know if you're gonna get a 15 incher mm -hmm. or a 25 pounder. Yeah. I mean, that's the beauty of inshore fishing or an 80 pound halibut, which sure. we've caught inshore. Yeah. Um, and so this gear is really sized for any fish. And even though we might not be able to catch that 80 pound halibut, mm -hmm. I still want to bring them to the boat, take some pictures and release them anyway, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, now one important, one other important fact is we go back to the board and you look at this setup, you're going to notice that I put some heat shrink around the pipe. Okay. And that is purely to cover 
the tips of that cotter pin. So it, your it's line, drilled, it goes all the way through, and then you correct. pull them and uh, uh, bend them around the pipe and secure them. That's right. So it doesn't pull back through. Right. And, and then you, you cover it so it doesn't hook on stuff. It doesn't hook on stuff. Right. It doesn't hook on your line. Yep. Um, and now the other thing I'll tell you is is when you're pouring these, okay, you're pouring lead. And, and one day we will do a how-to just on the pouring itself. But I will tell you that safety is paramount, mm -hmm. okay? When you have that raw lead, you want to bring it into your house and heat it up the day before. Okay, so if there's any moisture around, or maybe even in that in that lead, you want to get out as much as you can. Mm. Number two, as soon as you start to melt the lead, you would you need to have some sort of screen over the pot. Don't use an aluminum pot; you'll regret it, and you'll have a hole in your aluminum pot <laughs> after you're done. Right. Use a steel pot, cast right. iron yeah. pot. Okay, now when it's melting down for the very first time. Don't stand there and watch it, okay? Monitor it from afar, because what happens is this lead, whether you go and you find a downrigger ball that you want to melt down or some form of raw lead, it can have voids inside of that material and water will collect. And water and lead and heat are a disaster. It's an explosion, okay? You don't want to get it on you, your face, etc. So those are a couple key things about melting lead. We'll cover that how to. But that is your basic, oh, and one more thing. Let's go back to the board one more second. I gotta mention this. So as you look inside um, of these pipes, you're gonna see stainless steel cable. Now I went overkill because I had, had this. This is 500 pound stainless steel cable. You definitely don't need to use it. I ran it down inside the pipe. It's never coming out. Mm -hmm. And then I put a barrel swivel at the top where I can attach my line to. Um, and really, that's the A to Z on how to rig these. Um, now, there is a right way to fish these jigs, okay? And there's a wrong way. The absolute right way is you want this jig to pound the bottom with maximum velocity. You want to ring the dinner bell, mm -hmm. okay? If you're just kind of like, do, 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 like oh. Dwayne does, how was that? you're not going to catch any fish. Okay. Okay. Linkod love these. This is Linkod candy. They like noise. I All laid right. this one here just for uh, reference. This is a store bought. This is a one pound. Yeah. And that is a ten dollar lure. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Right. Why? So you may say, well, why? Why would I make these? Well, if you're going to fish pipe jigs, at times you're going to lose pipe jigs. Yeah. Uh, a one pounder. Okay. Ten bucks. Yeah. We can go up from there. Yeah. It we, gets expensive. It gets expensive. And and uh, so and. Th these are th obviously this is a pipe jig without the without the treble hook. It's got the eyelet at the top that we hook a swivel to, and we're and we're fishing, right? Um, I can also use this in another fashion, like we're out there in that one 100, 140 foot depth that we're dropping these down and and jigging. Uh, I want to use bait. Mm -hmm. um, you know me, if you followed me for the last several years or ten years, stick leads are kind of my go to yeah. in many uh, applications, right? Yeah, what so, you got over there? Well, I looked at that one pound narrow stick lead and I was like that's a stick lead right and so I'm going to use an 8 inch spreader bar I'm going to use that as a, to drop that lead down it's going to do two things it's going to yep. send off that electronical signal that they pick up on right yep um, so it's going to have that going for it's going to make noise when it's banging I can also put that leader on there and uh, multi wrap multi hitch it doesn't matter if I'm using a piece of herring mm -hmm. a trout or whatever I've caught link cod in shallower water using a one pound pipe jig in the form of a stick lead off my short spreader bar yeah. and use them bait. So there's so, so the reason, options. Yeah, the reason for that is too, is if you're using cannonballs, number one, they roll around the boat. You can't bring them on my boat. Right. And the other thing is they get stuck in the rocks. You Constantly. know, you go down, you're yes. bouncing bottom, yep. and, and you could be keeping your gear, you know, up out of the rocks, and then as soon as you go down that next drop to tap bottom, you put it right in the crevice. And, and it's game over. And it sweeps, and then it gets locked. Yep. In this here, much like the actual stick leads we use for river fishing and everything else, mm -hmm. narrow, slender, it's gonna bang, you're gonna get it up, it's gonna come back out. Those crevices, I mean, think about the structure you're fishing where lingcod mm -hmm. like to lie, they're, they're an, a, an ambush predator, they're coming up out of the holes and the crevices and the rocks. You get this down there, it seldom gets hung up, it works fantastic. Yep. So just some options. And you bring them in with that, they see, they, they hear the lead, they react to the lead and the mm -hmm. copper, mm -hmm. and then they see the bait, right? Yeah. And they key on the bait, Yep. and it's game over. A lot of different ways to do it. These these work just as well in, in many, uh, many uh, options that you have. These big uh, soft plastics on this one pound jig head, uh, multiple colors, motor oil is a great one, these big white grubs, mm -hmm. red, they all work, okay? The thing is with these one pound jig heads, and by the way, Tommy, 
they don't give these away either. No, they right? don't. Lead no, is expensive, don't. right? So I'm paying for a one pound jig head or jig lead here, and I'm fishing it in the fashion of a stick bait, putting a bait on there, seldom getting hung up. Mm -hmm. I do like to use these. They're very effective and they work well. Uh, but you're banging those off the rocks in those jagged rocks and structure where link cod live. You lose a ton of these. You do. You absolutely yep. lose a ton of these. So bring your wallet because it's gonna get skinny by the end of the day. It's a great option. You get a lot of these lead heads, you get your jigs, you get your soft plastics, you go fishing, it works. It all works. It's just a matter yeah. of how much you want yeah. to leave on the bottom of the ocean. That's right. You yeah. know, and if, if you know your area, I mean, if you know your area and you know that it's like a, a hard pan bottom, not like you're dropping off a of Mount Everest, yep. um, you, you can go with these all day and you're, and you're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but if you're trying to drop off, you know, the Twin Peaks and you drop from 60 feet down to 200, yeah. there's a chance you're, you're going to find yourself losing a lot of gear. Yep. So. so rely on your electronics, find your hard bottom, find your jagged rock structures, fish where you uh, find success and bring enough gear to make sure you make it to the end of the day. Yeah. All right, that's going to do it for us in the bait lane, unless you have something else. No, no, okay. that's everything, my friend. That is good. <laughs> that's going to do it for us here in the bait lab this week. Uh, we're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back, part two of our CQ Blackmouth Fishery. Mm. We're going to close it out, and then we'll be back in studio to close out the show.